<laughs> I feel like Dorothy. <laughs> I never I liked her. I mean, nothing gets. I, f I feel like people who drink and people get high are natural allies. So I don't judge people to get high. My personal experience with it has never been good. I'm too much in my head, I think. I, I want to be in control. I need to control my temper at all times, right? And I can control my temper on alcohol. I'm afraid that I can't do it when I'm high, right? So it just, so I can never relax, right? No, no thanks. So my point is I kind of get rich oh, coming okay. from He's very uncomfortable in this situation. Maybe. Of course, he's going to do it, of course, right? <laughs> as soon as I say that. There's no music playing. Just the way. Life and before, you know, digital, right? That turntable shit. Flip that record over, bitch. Oh, I thought he was going to flip it over. Oh, shit. Fortunately, this is back before people be looking at each other's eyes. Are you high? <laughs> oh, he's going to have another flashback. Gotcha. They're carefully doling this out, aren't they? You, man. Love this actor. I'm embarrassed to ask, seeing as we all have hard right now. Yeah, the hobo guy can trouble you for. Come back tomorrow. All right, I'll put I'll put a mark on your curb. Dick Whitman, stop digging holes. Oh, I thought that was his job. Fire under the cauldron. Hi, you kid. Don't talk to me, Mister. It reminds me of myself. That doesn't surprise me at all. Damn. God damn. That's some judging ass shit right there, man. No wonder he don't like his mom. We gonna have another mother who's a miserable cunt? Is that what we're gonna have? I'm from just east. Um, New York originally. Some other places. Oh, I ah. see. I get it. He put the idea of New York into the kid. They are souls. But they can't be saved. Damn. What is it? What kind of racism is it when it's against ideology? I guess that's just regular bigotry, right? You didn't show him where the money is, did you? You just showed him where your money is. That's not good. Tomorrow. When you finish the work. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, that can's gonna be gone tonight. Infected him with this New York nonsense. <laughs> Cool. They just did another commercial. Uh, Jonathan Nolan talked about in his audio commentary for the pilot episode of uh, Person of Interest that he wanted, he's used to writing movies. He wanted to put John Reese's entire motivational backstory in the pilot episode as flashbacks. The network told him this isn't going to work. First of all, we don't have screen time for it. Second of all, on a TV show, you got to pace yourself. You got to dole it out over the course of the first season, which is what they ended up doing. So if you watch the first season, you see that storyline get played out in in flashbacks throughout the course of the entire season. He wanted all of that that we saw in the first season. He wanted all of that in the pilot episode. And so he learned there's a different pace to a TV season than there is to a movie. In a movie, you put it out in two hours, you're done, right? You know, He figured if we had a two-hour pilot, you'd do the same thing. But no, you, you need to tease it out more. You're trying to fill space here. We're trying to tell a longer-form story. You want to give the audience time to think about these things in between these scenes. That's how, like, you can get an entire backstory in a, in a movie before you've had time to contemplate any of the aspects of the backstory. Before you've had time to see, okay, here's this part of the backstory. What do I think is a full story? You don't have time to do that in a movie because you're constantly being bombarded with these images and, and scenes and stuff. And before you know it, the movie's over and you've got everything. That's why I prefer a TV series. I prefer long-form long -term storytelling because we have time in between episodes to contemplate the various pieces we've been shown throughout the courses of the season. So I do think the TV format's better. And that's what they're doing here. They're slowly doling out this backstory over the course of the entire season. By the end of the season, we should know for a fact why he ran away, why he changed his name. And I predict by the, by the season finale, the first season, we'll know why he changed his name. And we'll have a definitive picture of his, of his backstory. And then there'll be, maybe other mysteries to carry forward. Like, we probably won't get much about his time in the military or whatever. That'll be carried out through future seasons. But this core backstory, his motivational backstory, is we'll know everything by the end of the season. This is a pretty important piece here, this hobo. I think what the hobo is going to do is he's going to steal from that can that we saw. Even though his back was to it, I, think, I still think he noticed. He'll steal that in the morning, he won't be there. If not, 
the other thing that the possibility that will happen is he'll have a conversation with the kid at some point that will we'll see more like damn okay this is where this came from this is where that came from maybe the guy's name even is don draper for all we know that would be interesting I'm too ahead of you. I have to eat something or I'm going to continue to rhapsodize. Oh, please do rhapsodize. She's having fun. Good for her. Of course she got invited. How would she not be, right? I can't believe she came. She came so she could judge and be a bitch, right? I don't see the art department. Oh, yeah. That's the ticket. <laughs> I think I had too yeah. much to drink. You are very petite. what a cunt. That's right, pull this bitch away. Somebody do something with her. God damn. Dude, there's two pay grades above you as hitting that. You ain't got a shot. But go for it, man. Shoot for the moon. Fuck it, right? <laughs> I'm not saying she's not hot. <laughs> I'm just saying she's a miserable cunt. <laughs> Oh shit. Dumbass. No back to the way I'm interested. Get up there and dance, asshole. Let's see if a bunny rabbit can dance. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> this son of a bitch had such a big hit, but then he had the balls to do the exact same goddamn song the next summer, and it was also a fucking hit. Let's let's twist again, right? The exact same fucking song. Did it the same the next summer and it was just as big of a hit. Like who would have the balls to do that, man? Well for went to the well twice. Cashed in twice. Respect, sir. Respect. <laughs> She's working this shit. Get your ass up and dance, bitch. Of course you don't. Of, of course you don't. What a dick. This is what she wants. This is what she wants. So, hey, I wash my hands, man. If this is what you want, then, you know, you have at it. Have fun with that. Hey, man, you sent a dude to get a drink for you. You gonna leave? That's a party foul for sure. Literally. <laughs> well, that's very troubling. The espresso beans. I ain't drinking nothing with flies, motherfuckers. By the way, don't think I'm not picking up what they're putting down. Obviously, I'm picking it up, right? You're loud, but you're shy. Like I'm getting my fortune told. I'm sorry. Nah. <laughs> hey, continue, man. What else am I? <laughs> so what do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. You break off with one of the riders? Have my own little... No, I mean my view. Man, I was talking about my fucking it. life it's plan, man. The park. Clearly, you don't give a shit. One of my favorite things in writing is when a character asks a question or says something, and then um, the other character takes it the wrong way. You can get a lot out of that, right? Both ways. You, you, there's so many, so many ways, so many things you can get out of that interaction. I like it. Have another, another drink. drink. Think, Think about, about it. it. I don't know. Now you're trying to get me drunk. Uh, that you're trying to break through my consent. What, what are, are you afraid, afraid of? of? But I know, sure? back in the day. We're back in the day, man. We're in the past. If we were in 2022... You don't care about my dreams. <laughs> I like him a lot, man. He needs to relax, but I like him a lot. And I get it, man. There's realities back then that just aren't present today. So, there was a lot to deal with back then. I've been staring in the mirror, flashing back for an entire night. We had a whole act break where I didn't do it. I was just in there staring at the mirror. Oh shit. Somebody call the police on your loud asses. You're all going to jail. He uses his wife like a speed bag. Oh man. No, he's the one that called on you. They know some carrot juice. <laughs> carrot juice. Can we even get carrot juice back now? Wait. <laughs> I like her, right? She's a free spirit. Smoke. No. Oh. You will, kid. You he will. Speaks. Praying won't help you from this place, kid. Yeah. Best keep, keep your mind on your mother. She'll probably look after you. In other words, your dad's success. Ain't you hurt? I'm a whore child. Oh, shit. You don't talk like a bum. I'm not. 
I'm a gentleman of the ring. Like I said, the hobo. A bomb? That's like calling a Trekkie a Trekker. Never call a Trekkie a Trekker. What have you? I'm a hobo. If death was coming any place, it's here, kid. Creeping around every corner. If death was here tonight, I'd be leaving tonight, yeah. motherfucker. You're an honorary. This is how we talk to each other. Yeah, the, the hobo code. On the That's front gate of every house. That's a pie. It means the food here is good. <laughs> this one. That means watch out for the nasty dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did they hold up a cue card. I used to read that a lot of them. That means a dishonest man lives here. Oh, shit. That means tell a sad story. Oh, shit. Don't be scared, kid. What uh, code is he going to put? He's going to put something in front of this house. The hobos don't ever come here again. It dishonest me. In other words, we say we're going to like you know give you a meal, but then we don't after you work. That kind of shit. Go ahead and burn the picture. We know you're going to, motherfucker. You too. <laughs> you're in love. Jealousy? That's ridiculous. Every day I make pictures where people appear to be in love. This is better. Put this on a poster. <laughs> she fucking pushed it aside. Like, it's bourgeois. Oh, shit. Breaking my heart. <laughs> Neither one of these people believe in love. That man's got a heart. Oh, shit. The girls Damn. are talking. Don't, Don't defend, defend him. him. Oh, now we're going to get this. doesn't solve anything. Yeah, but it solves your bad crap. Sure I really thought the police were going to be rolling into this. Every time we have a party, the ladies have to sit and listen to the man talk. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Telling yourself you're free. Are you free, motherfucker? Stop talking. He's got more in common with these motherfuckers than they really You make the lie. You invent. Want. I mean, he's not wrong here. You're for them. You see the suit, motherfuckers? The universe is indifferent. I mean, if we're going to get nihilistic with it, sure. Man, why did you have to say that? <laughs> You're bringing down their high. <laughs> you disgust me. Paris. Hell no. Now, let's go. Man, she ain't going to Paris, dude. You knew you were going to upgrade her to the, uh, the heiress anyway. Maggie Sif, whatever her character name is. You knew you were doing that anyway, so it's time to dump her. I dump your ass. Really? I knew he was gonna waste this money. Fucking idiot. Um, the cops. You can't, can't go, go out there. there. Dude, I wear a suit. I can go out you there. You can't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> man, they ain't gonna look at him twice. I knew he was gonna waste that fucking money, man. Easy come, easy go. Dumbass. Look at that. Sir. That's right, motherfucker. Put some respect in my name. Oh, right, you have a family. I keep forgetting. Hey, whatever your name is. At least he's not as shitty as father as his stepfather was. Oh, shit, you're gonna wake him up? Okay, he is as shitty. The fuck you want? Your sister's sleeping. Then why are you waking me up, bitch? Ask me anything. What? Why are you waking me up? That's my question. <laughs> Dick. Ask me. Why do my books light up? Man, I didn't know you were asking a hard question. Chemical reactions. Read a book, kid. I don't know. <laughs> Chemical reaction, dumbass. But I will never lie to you. I don't even know what lies mean. This I haven't conceptualized lying yet. I believe that, that does it. Dishonest man. On my way. Thank you again yeah, for sharing. He's a dishonest man. He could give that coin. Yep. <laughs> Get me paid, bitch. What's up? Yeah, that's what I thought. Let me get my chalk out. Be on your way already. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let me chalk this up here real quick. Kid saw that shit. Here's your chalk back. You know what you mark to make. Damn, that move, dude moved fast, man. I went too. I'm hauling ass. Yep. 
<laughs> he been lying to a lot of motherfuckers. I knew you was a dick. Boy, if I was his wife, I'd beat his ass, man. Really? <laughs> the outgoing song is... Th this takes a lot of uh, inspiration from The Sopranos, obviously. Give me that old-time religion. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I was reading a... I was reading an article yesterday talking about you know, just advertising trends and you know, subliminal advertising. Actually, they started doing it in 1957. Ad companies did this shit in 1957. They found out it didn't work, and then they lied to everybody and said it did work. There was an experiment they ran in a movie theater where they had, like, you know, they flash uh, eat popcorn, you know, thirsty, drink Coke, hungry, eat popcorn. They flash this shit during the movie, right? And they said the sales went up like 40% or whatever. When actually the sales hadn't changed at all. When somebody went back and looked at the numbers. They hadn't changed at all. There's been a lot of research on subliminal advertising since then. I'm not going to get into it. It's actually a very interesting topic. Uh, apparently it works if you're already inclined. Like if you're already thirsty. And it says drink Coke. You're more inclined to go get a Coke. If you're already thirsty. The problem is ad companies don't want to advertise to people who are already inclined to do their product. They want to advertise to people who aren't thirsty. And make them thirsty. And subliminal advertising apparently doesn't work with that. There's a lot more details, but the point is, back in 1957, three years before the show started, they were already doing nefarious shit. You talk about lies, the big lies and all that stuff. They were already doing really underhanded, nefarious shit, trying to manipulate people. Advertising, I have a feeling in this, this time place, this time period, advertising was massive, a big business. Which is why they said it where they did, right? I don't know much about the history of advertising, especially in the 60s, but I have a feeling a lot of earth-shattering things happened during this decade. And we're going to be covering that through the course of the series. It's all fascinating stuff. I, I love all this shit. So I love history and I love like, uh, the history of manipulation and selling shit and propaganda and all that crap. Because the advertising agency, we're only like 15 years removed from Nazi propaganda, which worked great, right? So the ad companies are trying to incorporate some of that stuff. They're seeing there are ways to manipulate people. We're just trying to find out exactly what it is. That's one of the journeys this show is on.